Well, uh, welcome again to the fourth lecture of uh, this particular session on uh, two phase flow and uh, flow boiling in micro channels. So, we continue with our discussions on the different flow patterns. Now, what did we observe? We observed that in this particular case, your uh, <coughs> body forces are negligible as compared to surface tension forces, right. So, for that case, what happens? The first thing is sup stratification is suppressed as we have already discussed. The next thing is there is less effect of channel orientation and the influence of channel orientation it decreases with pipe diameter. This was evident when we compared the uh, flow patterns in the vertical micro channel with the flow patterns in the horizontal micro channel, we sorry milli channel. We found that more or less the same flow patterns are there. We have dispersed bubbles for a very small range, we have annular again for a very small range. The primary reason for this is firstly as I had I have already told you that body force less significant compared to surface tension forces. Due to this what happens? The effect of inclination is less, asymmetric distribution is less. The other thing is we find that viscous forces more important compared to inertial forces. What does this imply you tell me? When I say viscous forces is more important compared to inertial forces, it automatically implies that we are dealing with low Reynolds number flow regime. And so, therefore, in, in this case we encounter Reynolds number which are in the laminar flow region. So, naturally in this particular case what we, we come across since they, they are primarily in the laminar flow region. So, the shear effect is very less as a result of which this bubbles one formed they have very less tendency to coalesce or break down etcetera. So, therefore, bubbly flow and annular flow they are much more suppressed because all sorts of interfacial waviness the shearing the churning these things are not there. So, number one bubbly flow which is very common here is not there. Churn flow the way it is found in macro channels with large erratic chunks of gases oscillating in a random fashion it is not periodic mind it they are just oscillating in the random fashion up and down. If you recollect the video of churn flow which I had shown in the last class that type of churn flow is not present for your micro systems. On the contrary, we find that the Taylor bubbles they start getting larger and lar larger, they are they almost appear to be stacked one above the other and depending on conditions. Say for example, the, um, uh, the uh, gas velocity, the liquid velocity, the tube dimension, in fact the tube uh, your geometry or the, uh, the wall conditions depending on everything, the transition from slug to annular can occur by several ways. One can be at very low liquid velocities, the Taylor bubbles they are just stacked one above the another and gradually they coalesce with one another and they form a continuous gas core. Now, in this particular case while they are getting stacked, there are very thin liquid slugs which are intercepting the continuity of the gas core and this type of flow pattern we find people call them as bubble train flow. Now, whenever you are going through the literature on micro channels, the first problem you will face is that for the same distribution, people have used different different names. So, the first thing you have to understand is that basically all the names they suggest the same distribution. Just because people were not uh, very much conversant with the different types of distribution, so with small differences, maybe a name was assigned to to describe its character. For example, we have confined bubble flow for the and this is particularly more important with respect to boiling. 
I will not be describing it or I will not be discussing it in details in this particular class, but there is something known as the confined bubble flow where the bubble after being formed at the nucleation site, they start growing and moment they start growing they encounter the other wall. So, they cannot grow or they cannot detach from this particular wall and rise just in a, a macro channel system. So, they get almost stuck up between the two walls and they, they elongate in the flow direction and then they start flowing. So, this and they or rather they are they are they are pushed up by the incoming liquid. This is known as confined bubble flow. Then we have something known as the isolated bubble flow, where we have isolated bubbles the way it is shown. Remember one thing as I have told you the tendency of coalescence and breakup is very less here. So, once formed they more or less retain their identity. So, this is known as the confined bubble flow or the isolated bubble flow. Then when the bubbles start becoming larger, they again start coalescing with one another and we have a coalescing bubbly regime, but all these are different versions of the slack flow pattern. So, the first thing and the other thing is uh, which I missed on the way that that while the slug is getting transition to the annular flow pattern, this occurs one by the, the short liquid necking as I have said. Sometimes what happens, we find that the, the Taylor bubbles become quite large and the liquid velocity is also possibly appreciable. So, therefore, there is gas shedding from the tail of the Taylor bubbles just like the formation of aerated liquid slugs in macro channels and due to this particular gas uh, shedding, they form an sort of an erratic sort of a, a co composition and there is a lot of waviness in the interface. So, therefore, this is also termed as the churn flow. What we would prefer is this entire paradigm of flow distributions which mark the transition from the slug to the annular flow pattern can be clapped together as the slug annular transition. So, for our purpose we have the uh, intermittent flow pattern or the slug flow pattern, we have the slug annular transitions, we have the annular flow pattern. Even in annular flow pattern, we find that the serpentine like uh, core flow has been reported by a large number of researchers and that as we have seen the primary reason for this is the increase in viscous forces. The, in more the increasing importance of viscous forces suppresses the formation of bubbly and the churn flow pattern. Well, along with, but if we find the flow, achha, there is one more thing that while stratification gets suppressed and surface forces start becoming important, naturally the conditions of the wall become very important in this case. And we find that the effects of the roughness of the wall, the wettability of the wall, whether the wall is hydrophobic or hydrophilic, the inlet geometry such things become very important under these cases. They were not so very important in macro channels. So, naturally these things require an additional discussion and we will be having this discussion in the course of this lecture series. Then as I have already told you viscous forces dominate over inertia or in other words we are operating at a low Reynolds number range and the most important thing that effect of channel orientation is less significant. Now, this we have already seen for air water flows in mini channels, micro channels it is even less. Here there is one particular uh, slide from experiments done in the multiphase flow laboratory of the chemical engineering department. Here also we find that for vertical upward, vertical downward, horizontal flow, we find that more or less they are marked by slugs, the slugs become larger and then we have annular in all the three cases. So, this shows the insignificant effect of orientation even in millimeter size conduits both for gas liquid as well as liquid liquid systems. On the contrary, I would like to show you the remarkable effect of orientation. This I had mentioned, but I did not exhibit this yesterday. So, I would just like to show you the effect of orientation in macro systems. In this particular case, 
see this is a very good video which I have got from YouTube just to show the effect of orientation. You find two phase flow air water flow occurring in a horizontal tube in a vertical up flow, vertical down flow and then, then in an inclined tube. You can very well understand stratification here the formation of slugs in this particular case. Remember one thing this will be referring later on this type of bends and T's they induce slug flow. We find that the flow gets decelerated during up flow by gravity, they get accelerated by gravity in down flow. This is quite evident if you observe the distributions and then there are some sort of secondary flow in the in this particular tube. So, therefore, here you find the distinct effect of orientation on flow patterns in macro system vis a vis I show you the, fl the flow patterns or the effect of orientation in the case of micro channels. So, therefore, <laughs> this is one particular thing we should be keeping in mind when we go. So, in general we find where the body forces becoming more significant. Achha, one more thing that suppression of annular flow this I forgot to mention that whenever the, the, there is some amount of waviness also in the liquid film, the waviness is sufficient to bridge the mm, uh, Taylor bubbles. So, this is also another cause why we have enhanced range of slug flow in this particular case. Now, we find that no matter how much we discuss and whatever we say the net effect on the flow patterns be it liquid liquid, be it gas liquid in miniaturized system is an extended range of slug flow. And this is a very very fortunate situation I should, I should say. The slug flow range it occurs over a wide range of or rather wide range it occupies a wide range of any particular operating condition where we had bubbly flow in macro systems, we have slug flow because the bubbles get larger and they are they, they are of comparable di dimension with the pi pipe conduit. Where we had churn flow, we have long log plugs in this particular case. Where we had annular flow also in this particular case, we find that since the waviness is quite sufficient, so therefore the, uh, the two waves they get bridge and they form slug flow. And here I would like to tell you that this is the primary reason why we have process intensification in miniaturized system. It is primarily because of the extended range of slug flow. Why is it so special? Let us now see how slug flow occurs. We had already, already spent quite some time during the introductory session also for this particular case. What we find? We have we find that elongated liquid plugs or gas plugs they are flowing and they are separated from a channel wall by a liquid film. And also between two plugs there is a plug of another liquid or if this is gas plug there is a there is a liquid slug in between. Now, in this particular case if you find you find the entire plug surface is available for mass transfer. While you if you observe annular flow you just find that the only the interface between the gas and the liquid or between two liquids is available for mass transfer. In this case even the edges are also available. Moreover you find that since there is a continuous concentration gradient here. So, therefore, some sort of convection currents are set in between the um, uh, fluid at the periphery and through the center. So, therefore, regular convection currents are set in and due to this particular internal circulation within the slug, we find always fresh surfaces are being exposed for mass transfer to the other liquid. Same thing happens here also. Here also we find some sort of recirculation takes place in the slugs of both the phases. As a result of which we find that here also there is continuous replenishment of fresh surfaces and this explains the enhanced transport properties under the slug flow pattern and this explains the reason for process intensification in miniaturized systems. 
you can always argue that the interfacial area is more for bubbly flow patterns. So, therefore, there should be enhanced transport in the bubbly flow pattern. It is very true the interfacial area is more, but if you observe you find that mass transfer or heat transfer it is depend upon the coefficient say for mass transfer the overall volumetric mass transfer coefficient which is nothing but k into a that is important. right? Now, definitely A is high in bubbly flow, I agree with you, but because of the small relative velocity between the two fluids, there is a very less slip effect as a result of which the slip effect it induces some amount of churning mixing. I will not use the word turbulence, because usually we operate at such low Reynolds number that the word turbulence will not be very correct here, but it induces so much of mixing and agitation that that is absent for bubbly flow pattern. Do you understand? Since the slip, what is the slip? It is the ratio of the two velocities. I do not remember whether I had explained it in the last class or not. The slip ratio is given as, of course, both are k. So, I make it capital K. It is, is given as the ratio of the in situ velocities of the two phases. Now, higher the slip is, more is the churning and more will be the your mass transfer coefficient. Now, in bubbly flow what we have? We have a higher A, but a lower K and in annular flow the A is also less, the K is also less, but in this particular case due to the churning that I was showing you the K is also high and the A is also high because of the presence of edges as well as the surfaces. So, with everything we have find that it gives us an enhanced K A the overall volumetric mass transfer coefficient and this brings about process intensification. And again there is another advantage of slug flow not related directly to process intensification is in this particular case if you observe it is sort of a separated flow pattern also the gas slugs then liquid slugs etcetera etcetera. So, therefore, it is very easy to separate the two phases also after they have flowed through this through any particular system and this is particularly very important for your micro systems, because it is very difficult to separate micro emulsions, micro dispersions and so on and so forth. Now, before I proceed further, I would be quite interested to show you, see I have explained you that because of uh, the extended range of slug flow, we get process intensification, but I would just like to show you one particular example, where in the multiphase flow laboratory of the chemical engineering department of IIT Kharagpur, we have actually performed or rather we have actually obtained enhanced slug flow and we have obtained enhanced mass transfer in the slug flow pattern. Now, how did we do it? We were working with milli channels and we found out that in milli channels also suppose we have a large number of bends then slug flow range gets enhanced. So, what we did? We took three different milli channel geometry one was a straight tube with a T entry, where we were working with water and toluene. So, therefore, water was coming through one particular uh, arm of the T, toluene through the other arm and they were flowing down. The other thing which we did was that we took, we induced one particular bend and the same geometry, the same length, we just made it to, to encounter simply one particular bend. And then what we did? We multiplied the number of bends. So, therefore, three conduits that we were working, one was this particular downflow geometry, one was one single bend, the other was we used a multi bend. Now, in these three situations, what we found was that we were working with a 2 millimeters diameter tube. Definitely, we were having slug flow for quite a range in this particular downflow geometry. The slug flow range increased here and then it was more in this particular case. We were trying to measure the overall mass transfer coefficient when water and toluene was flowing and acetic acid was diffusing from the toluene phase 
to the water phase. So, actually acetic acid plus toline was entering as the organic phase and water was entering and during the course of the flow acetic acid was diffusing from the organic phase to the aqueous phase. So, at the outlet we had caught toline either free of acetic acid or with reduced acetic acid and we had caught an aqueous phase comprising of water and acetic acid. And we measured that during the flow just to find out the amount of acetic acid which has diffused, we measured the amount of mass transfer which has occurred and we tried to find out the mass transfer coefficient. Now, here we have tried to plot it for several constant water velocities while toline velocity was increasing. What did we find? You can observe these data are for the slug flow pattern. Slug flow mass transfer coefficients are much higher as compared to the annular flow pattern. This was number 1. And then also within this slug flow we found if you I do not know whether you can understand this T S 4 is the multi bend device always in the multi bend device the mass transfer coefficient was higher even when we had slug flow in all the three geometries. Then we encountered a situation when there was slug flow in the single bend and multi bend geometry and there was annular flow in the straight pipe. You can just imagine the extent of enhancement of it was about 2 to 2.5 times enhancement of mass transfer coefficient we observed when the flow pattern in the bend devices was slug while in the straight tube it was annular. So, from here immediately we can know that um, how much enhancement the slug flow pattern can provide over the other flow patterns namely the annular and the dispersed flow patterns. So, this was one way to show that slug flow enhances mass transfer or heat transfer and then the other thing is when we are working with micro and milli channels the range of slug flow gets enhanced. So, in that way it is quite evident that this is the reason why miniaturization is the buzzword now and why we affect process intensification using miniaturized channels. But one thing you have to remember that everything cannot be rosy about any particular device then research would have ended that cannot happen. So, there are several disadvantages of this micro channel devices as well. What are the disadvantages? First thing is you have to use ultra clean fluid there is an every tendency of the channel getting choked. Fabrication is difficult from common sense we can say. Design process is not very well established that also goes without saying. They are very expensive definitely. The other thing is the pressure drop is very high. So, therefore, we have to take these into considerations while we are working with micro channel devices. And the problem of working with micro channel devices or rather the uh, lacunae or the need for studying micro channel devices is primarily because that till now we have understood that the macro and the micro channel devices they are having quite different flow patterns. And therefore, the, uh, the information which we have for macro channel devices cannot be extended in a straightforward manner to the micro channel system. And we do not have an inad we do not have an adequate understanding about the transport phenomena in reduced dimensions. Till now we need further investigation to understand the role of different design and operating parameters on the performance of the design of the device and scale up is also very important. Now, one very important thing I had forgotten to tell you, I have discussed when we are discussing multi, uh, uh, multi phase microchannel flow, 
I had told you that, well, we have an extended range of slug flow and all those things. There is another very important thing you have to remember. I have told you that the pressure drop is very high while flow occurs in micro tens. When pressure drop is very high, naturally if it is a gas liquid flow, what happens? The gas compressibility effects come into picture and compressible flow characteristics set in. And as a result, we find this almost everybody has reported that if you observe the flow during in a micro channel, you find that a large number of flow patterns occur while the flow is going on. So, while in micro macro channel systems, after a developing length, we found that the same flow pattern used to occur and maybe it was slug, it was churn, accordingly we used to name the flow pattern for any particular given condition. But in this case, if you observe, I think this particular slide will be better to for you to appreciate this, uh, the thing which I am trying to impose upon you. If you observe this whole thing was taken at one particular instant of or rather for one particular location for different instants of time. At one particular time for did people see, they saw single phase liquid flow. Then they saw the tail of the gas slux. Then there was something like liquid ring flow and then it became serpentine like core. Now, this is a very frequent occurrence in multiphase flow, this micro channel flow sorry. We have the simultaneous occurrence of a large number of flow patterns in the flow passage at the same instant of time. Now, when this occurs, what is the problem? Then how do you define what is the exact flow pattern which exists under known conditions? So, what people have done for that is they have taken up the probability of finding any particular flow pattern in a conduit at any instant of time. And they have found out the flow pattern which has the greatest probability of occurring under a given set of flow conditions and then that particular flow pattern is assigned under that particular conditions for constructing the flow pattern maps. Now, regarding flow pattern maps, I think I should be elaborating it a little more. So, we do it in the next lecture while we continue discussing the two phase flow through micro channels. Thank you very much.